our WVU Fleet Studio <laughs> Open Air Fresh Air series. I'm going to ask everybody to please mute themselves. Um, if you're not me and you're not Nina Perlo, if your name, if your first name is not Nina, mute yourself. <laughs> Great. So we have um, a bunch of return flutists here in the room. It looks like we have 30 people. Welcome everybody. Um, and just to kind of say, um, you know, our studio is running. We, we have studio classes every Tuesday and Thursday from three to four. We run, um, that's a normal thing, not just a good thing. And if you are um, on Facebook and look at our schedule, you'll see all of the dates of exactly who's coming when uh, this semester. And they're all free and open to the public and they're all on this Zoom link. So once you have the link, which you do because you're here, you can just keep popping in. And a number of these will be placed on our YouTube channel and a kind of eventually on Facebook, maybe Dustin, right? We're not sure yet. But um, so if there's, you know, if you want to kind of keep your eyes open for that, you can check out our channel. So I'd like to welcome Nina Perlov, who I've been following for years and I'm so grateful that she's with us today and we're going to uh, have a master class where each student we have three students who are going to play for work with um, Nina Perla for 20 minutes each and then we're going to have a Q&A at the end and it, I'm very excited specifically about this Q&A because um, Nina is a sort of a I think a famous entrepreneur in the music world she was one of the first YouTube active flutists and musicians. And so we're really lucky to have um, her to speak with and gather wisdom and advice from. So that's what we'll sort of focus the Q&A on. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Nina, just to say a few words about yourself, who you studied with, um, where you're from, you know, I don't know, a couple things. And then Dustin will start the series with the, the lineup of the students. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I'm really happy to be here on Zoom, of course. Uh, my background, so I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I started studying with the flute professor at the University of Michigan while I was still in high school. That was Keith Bryan. Um, and so then I went to the University of Michigan, which is an amazing school of music, and I got a Bachelor of Music degree from the University of Michigan. And then I was really fortunate. Um, in the summers when I was in college, I went to a summer music institute in Quebec, Canada called Domain Forge, which had several flute teachers from France would come into this uh, festival. So I would go for two weeks every summer, practice my French and study flute with amazing flute teachers. And one of the flute teachers there was Alain Marion, who I hope you all recognize that name if you don't pretend that you do and then immediately go out and Google him and listen to his recordings. And um, he was the lead professor at the Paris Conservatory, the Paris Conservatory, you know, T-H-E, like the one. Um, and he invited me, he said, you should come to France and study with me. So I finished my undergraduate degree because finishing college is very important. And then uh, I had a Fulbright scholarship and I went and studied in Paris with um, several amazing French flutists, including Alain Marion, and I stayed there for two years. Then I came back to the United States and got a master's and a doctorate in flute performance with a, a subspecialty in the history of American music at the University of Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. And I ended up staying in the Cincinnati area after I graduated, uh, got married, have a family, and have made this my home. And um, at some point between point A of graduating with a doctorate and where I am now, um, this new thing was invented called YouTube. Um, some of you are so young, you may not remember a world without YouTube. But um, in about 2007, it was very, very new. And I started putting up flute videos on this free resource and people, much to my surprise, started watching them and following them. And so it was an amazing opportunity for me to connect with flutists around the world. And I've sort of built that whole video blogger thing into my musical life. And here I am. Yay! 
<laughs> and I remember seeing you on YouTube. Actually, I rem I have to just put this in here. I remember the first time that somebody said to me, do you know what YouTube is? And I was like, no, what is that? And they were like, well, it's like television on the internet, like YouTube. And I was like, and he's like, yeah, there's this beatbox flute player doing Mario something. And so he sent me a link and it was of course, Greg Patillo, of course. And I was like, what is this thing called YouTube? And then I found you and now- we Another have Nina, right? Cause you probably were like, what? She has my name. Yeah. So <laughs> So uh, it's really amazing. And if you don't know Nina's channel, go check it out. It's, it's like amazing, amazing, amazing. And so many, I'm always sending students, especially high school students for all your amazing tutorials on just the Yay. beginnings of every kind of, you know, technique and stuff. So, okay. So I think we're ready, Dustin, for you to launch us. And Dustin will give you the five minute warning, Nina. Is that a good amount of time? Oh, yeah. Please don't hesitate to interrupt me and be like, you're losing track of time. We need to move on. Okay. okay. Um, what would you like to start with? Do you have a preference or um, we can just go in order? I don't have a preference. It's, okay. it's up to the students and who, who's okay. ready to go. Okay, great. I guess we'll start with um, Sammy. So I'll play just a little bit of her uh, Uber. Awesome. Hello, my name is Sammy Holloman. I'm a graduate student here at West Virginia University, and today I will be playing for you the second movement of the Iber Concerto. I'm seeing in the chat that we're having, we're running into a problem that some people cannot hear still. So, um, let me try and make sure that I'm sharing my computer sound and that everything. Well, I could hear and it was lovely. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to hearing more. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was working on Tuesday as well, and I have the same setup, so I'm really not sure why some people aren't able to. Maybe what we should do, um, Sammy, uh, first of all, can everybody hear Sammy when she speaks? Do, 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 do. Okay, why don't we just do this the good old, the new good old fashioned way? Right. Uh, because right. the videos have been like really quirky and kind of not, dependable. So should, should Sammy just play maybe, Nina? What do you think? I, I'm happy to do that. And I, I did hear um, most of her video prior to the session. So I took some notes on some things I heard, but I'd love to hear. So I got to hear you play the piano. Okay. But let's go ahead and um, just, just go ahead and start. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. 
That is beautiful. I hope it's okay if I'm going to stop you there so we can talk about some things, but very, very beautiful job. Thank you. I know it's weird. We, we are clapping even though we're on <laughs> <laughs> I know it feels like I played and it was silent, but we're, we're <laughs> clapping. Um, so first of all, I really liked your sense of line. Um, really nice phrases and lines and connections. Um, I'm going to teach you a trick that okay. I learned in Paris. Awesome. Um, it's a very subtle difference and it applies not just to this piece, but this is for all of you listening. Um, and I learned this from Ella and Marion. It's a tiny difference, but it, um, it changes the sophistication of the overall quality of your playing. And what it is, is I want you to try to start your phrases at the very beginning of a piece, but also after a breath without a tongue. Oh, okay. So a tongueless attack. Sure. Um, and what that does is there's sort of this like continuum of breath in and breath out. And I sort of visualize it almost as like a wheel that spins, breath in, breath out. And when we take the breath in, we can, we can have the breath go directly from an intake of a breath to an exhale with saying more like saying, ha, ha, instead of, Ta. Because when I add that tongue in, I'm actually stopping the air for a nanosecond. Now, if you're playing a piece where you definitely need to start a phrase with a very clear ta, then of course you want to use your tongue. But in a piece like this, where you're starting with these really rich, chocolatey, warm, who kind of sounds, you want to go so I want you to start at the beginning and it might feel really weird at first. So do it a few times, you know, just experiment with it. Instead of playing as your first two notes, play you hear how the sound kind of comes out of nowhere. So you want to create that, where did that come from? Wonder, that's the sense of wonder that the audience has when suddenly there's silence and then suddenly there's sound. So try just the first two notes a few times in a row so that your body can start to get comfortable with that. Now, how did that feel? It felt great. I do have a question for you. I'm noticing the, the first time it didn't happen, the last two times I did it, I got a little bit of a whistle tone before the note spoke. So you just have to get comfortable with that start, with that nanosecond between no sound and sound. So which means you need to make sure you're directing the air into the flute. And I actually think that was one of the other things that I would like to see you do is to get a little bit more resonance in the sound. Now, even though we want that sort of warm quality and we don't want it to be too harsh and direct, I still think you would benefit from a little bit more resonance. And um, you can try moving the flute lower on your chin like a, a millimeter. But really what you need to do is you need to make sure the air is going inside that little thing right there. And I think that having a whistle tone before is just telling me that the air is directed a little too high. So if you... So just start that first note again. Go ahead. I'm not hearing you. Did you play? Uh-oh. Has everybody's sound gone out? 
Hello? That's very weird. Oh, hello? I don't... Is anyone else having trouble hearing her? Hmm. Okay, try again. I'm trying to change my, hello? I do not know why I'm not hearing anybody anymore. Hello, hello. No, I cannot hear you, Nina. Test, test, test. I might have to leave the call and come back in. Oh, wait, I hear something. I hear you. I think I hear you now. Can you I hear, hear you, Dustin. Me? Okay, you can hear me. I hear Dustin. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. What about Sammy? Can you... Sammy, say something. No. Hello. Yeah, maybe, maybe Sam. I'm just going to leave and come back in. Okay. And maybe Sammy can do the same um, and see if that helps fix it. What, what countries do we have here? I know we have Slovenia. Hi, Tina. Do we have Argentina? Hi. Oh, hi, so sorry. <laughs> yes, I am from Argentina. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the sounds cut. There are moments that cut the sound. I cannot. There are a mark, a yellow mark. I hear you now. Oh, I think. I okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, now. I think the problem was there was like white sound happening. So anytime your box is highlighted as yellow, you're not going to be able to hear the other person. I think that's what happened. Oh, interesting. Okay, I, I can hear now. Nina, okay. Can you say something? Shall we try it again? I cannot hear Nina speaking at all, but Samantha, I can hear you. Okay, do you want to try it again? Yes, so okay, awesome. I want you to start it again and just keep going, but when you get to your first breath, when you come in after that first breath, try not to use that tongue. Perfect. <laughs> two measures before 25. Okay. And I'd like you to make sure, really think about this concept of getting your air through um, the flute by angling it down. But rather than thinking of just angling it straight down, which I sort of feel like is um, like a dead angle, because what we want to do is we want the whole flute.
root to resonate. Right. We want to use every bit of metal to, to, for the molecules to vibrate and make sound waves so that we're using this whole instrument, right? So if I just angle straight down, I get a sound, and I don't know if this will translate over Zoom. It's fine, but if I really push it through, what I do is I angle it a tiny bit to the crown. I angle it down into the crown with enough energy that it bounces back out, like a ping pong ball. Not straight down, but so can you start with these low D, which is already not our favorite note? And then you're going up through the register, but you have to maintain the resonance. Okay. lovely that sounded those first two measures it was a nice improvement now when we get to that d flat that's a tricky note we don't want to have any whistle okay in the tone quality there so i i think you're getting that whistle because your angle is too out here so you need to hold it and just because it's a higher note and because it's an, an emotional point of the phrase i mean that's our that's a, like a very emotional point of the phrase. You don't have to push it. Okay. We always think, oh, it's loud, it's high, it's emotional, we push. But actually, you need to bring the sound to you. Okay. And let your body resonate. This is a five minute warning. Okay, thank you, Justin. <laughs> then bring it in. I'm feeling it here. Not out here, not. See, that's pushing it. Did you hear it was out of tune? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not saying that you were pushing it that hard, but for demonstration purposes. So try those two before 25 again. better to me. Yeah, it felt a lot better. Quality. So keep working on that. Okay. Um, I'm not really in love with your choice of breaths in these measures after 25. Okay. Um, I, if possible, if you can make it to the bar, the bar line, that's one, two, after 25, one, two, three, four, between the fifth and sixth, one, two, three, between the fourth and fifth measure, but that means you're gonna to have to go a little farther. You're gonna to have to, you can breathe before, let's see. That's right at 25, you can breathe after the F. I, I think it's okay to breathe on that bar line. Okay. You, you took a breath, a measure and a half before that, after the F, between the F and the G. And I don't, I always want my breaths to function the same as punctuation in a sentence. So it either is a little pause, a comma, or a period. Okay. Um, so that it just flows with, with the natural semi cadences and full cadences. Um, so I would like that breath better, and then don't breathe before the C in the measure or two later. So then that two measures becomes the phrase. Okay. Um, then the other thing that I'd like you to think about, and we don't have a lot of time, but it's something that you can work on on your own, is make when, when we're playing a slow movement, 
there can be a tendency to think, okay, slow is beautiful and slow is beautiful. And we, I don't want you to be afraid of being slow, but sometimes we have a fear of sometimes moving ahead. Mm -hmm. And if you have moments where you're willing to move the tempo ahead, it makes the moments when you pull it back all the more beautiful. So there are times when you want to push the tempo. Um, I'm thinking around, let's see, a little bit before 30, because I, I watched your video. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this whole section, 29 to 30, um, And here. Then you can be slow. So if you push it a little bit right before that, then you have this magical change right before 30. subtle differences. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about tempo. It's how I'm playing with tempo. And I don't want you to fall into the trap, the diminuendo trap. <laughs> and I want you guys all, to all listen to this because this is done universally by musicians. When we see a diminuendo, we slow down. That does not, a diminuendo does not equal a slow down. It can, and sometimes it does, but it's very easy to always slow down when you get closer. And that can bog down a piece. It can be a death sentence for a piece it, because every time you have a diminuendo, you get slower and then the next phrase is slower. And then there's another diminuendo. And by the end, you're at like a really much slower tempo than you realized. And you don't know how you got there. So Sometimes it's dramatic to diminuendo and speed up, and that is hard to do because your instincts are telling you to slow down, but actually it's very dramatic sometimes to push through and get softer, but you're still moving, even if you're getting quieter, you're getting faster. So I, I think you um, are off to a great start on this and you have a good handle on it, and these are just gonna be the nuances that you can play with. Awesome, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Of course, my pleasure. Great. Thank you for playing for us today. Thank you. Uh, great job, Sammy. Um, why don't we move on to JC now? And um, I don't know if you would like me to try the video again um, or with sharing that, or if you would And is JC um, playing the Chaminade? No, she's doing the birds. Okay. The <laughs> we can give it a try and see how it goes. If it doesn't work right, we'll just okay. stop and, and move okay. on. Where's JC on the screen? Did you wave? I'm right here. Oh, there she okay. is. Okay, good. Um, Dustin, as you're um, working the time, I think Katie and I probably need about 15 minutes instead of 20 since Nathan needs the room right at four. Yep, I've already, already got that. Thanks, JC. I'm gonna stop it right there. Um, that works. Could everyone hear it? Or are I we could. Still, are we still encountering problems or not? Let me check the chat. Oh, some people are having trouble. Oh, some people are still not. So maybe it would be better for um, us to just work with JC then. That's fine. JC, you're on the spot. <laughs> Nothing like having to be flexible, right? <laughs> Do you want me to start with the first one or do you want me to jump to one of the others that was in the video? No, let's go. We can start with the first one. I, and I have to tell everybody, I have never played this piece. So 
So um, I, I think it's really cool. Um, but when I demonstrate it, I'm not going to have all the notes. piece yay nice job very well done so this is not a piece where you would start without a tongue so this is a totally different quality because we want to and in fact the the tonal quality of this piece um, is really I would describe it as precise um, and I mean of course it's rhythmically precise but I mean I'm talking about sound quality that we need every single teeny tiny note to be heard as an individual note. Um, so what, what we need to do is, is um, first of all, make sure you don't push too hard. That, that concept is the same, especially when there's fast tongued repeated notes, which we have this motive that repeats over the ticka ticka ta, and sometimes it's, it's extended. So it's ticka 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 ta. So like in the first line, it's ticka ticka ta, and then later, Ticka 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 ta, or sometimes it's ta ticka ta ticka ticka ta. So that's a motive that we we see throughout the piece, and we need every single one of those notes to speak, and we do that not by blowing more, but by blowing less and keeping the sound resonating. So could you just play those high A's at the very first line? And even though it crescendos and there's a double forte, you do not want to overblow because okay. it will just go sharp. We don't want that. Can I hear those? Da, ticka, ticka, ta. Yeah. That's right. And remember that the emphasis is on um, ta, ticka, tucka, ta, ta, ticka, ticka, ta. It, I don't want you to overdo it, but rhythmically that's the grouping. So super small opening here. Can you just do that for me? Feel the sound inside your body cavity and not being spit. You don't wanna, you wanna spit the super screen. Drawing in. That was getting there. Did you hear that? Did you hear when they pop? Ticka, ticka, ticka. Yeah. So that's something to practice. Um, the other thing that I think is kind of cool and interesting about a piece like this is we're really going for this mood and quality of 
improvisation and spontaneity. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you can do to help create that is to make sure that your breaths are in the mood and the character of what comes after. Okay. And this goes for all types of music. It goes for the Iber, that we the second movement of Iber. So when you're playing When you're starting with Iber like that, you take a breath that's warm and gooey. But when you're playing your piece, we can't take the same kind of breath that we took for Iber. We can't go. It just doesn't make sense. So what you need to do is you need to take a. Your breath needs to have attack to it, that energy and that attack. Try that. It might, again, it might feel really weird, and so just experiment with it. Okay. That was it. I mean, I thought that sounded better already. Did you guys? Could you tell the difference? Okay. Let's hear the second line. Keep going. Same thing. Make your make your breaths part of the expression of the piece. Okay. Try it again. That was really clean. I, I nailed it. So I think it already sounds more spontaneous and more playful. So I love that. So remember that this piece is tiring to play. And it's tiring to play not because of what you're doing when you're blowing air out. It's because of the energy that you're using when you breathe in. The breaths, they're energized. Um, you know, and Alain Marion used to say, he taught me this too, um, that if you're going to say to a, a brand new little baby that you're meeting for the first time and the baby's asleep and you don't want to wake up the baby, but you want to say, what a beautiful baby. You don't go, oh, what a beautiful baby, <laughs> right? You breathe like what you're going to say. You say, what a beautiful baby. Right? But if somebody is walking down the street and they're about to cross the street and they're looking at their phone and they don't see the cars coming and you want to shout to them, stop. You don't take a breath the same way you take a breath when you're talking to the beautiful baby. You don't go, stop. Right? You go, stop. So your piece has an energy to it. You have to breathe with that energy. And then the music that comes out afterward will be propelled. Okay, great. Um, Five minute warning. Okay, great. There's this phrase at the end of line three, which I, I don't know that I can play for you because I haven't learned it, but. I hear a rocking quality that's trying to get out. I hear that it's yeah. there. It's written into the piece, but I need you to feel it. So, um, I need you to hear this little section. It's starting at the B flat. It's like the one of the three last notes, four last notes. Starting at that B flat, all the way through to our motive, which is the ticka ticka da. That in there is one phrase, and it has to be executed as a phrase with no pauses in between it. And I need you to feel it rock. Okay. Can you try that for me? Yeah. It's very Stravinsky like. Okay. So try. You can go, and if that's an awkward place for you to start, then go a little bit before it. Just find a place that's comfortable for you. Okay. So I think what I want is a little more length on the E natural. Okay. So it, so it connects and it doesn't stop. 
because we have a lot of choppiness in this piece. What's going to make it more interesting is if you find the moments that will contrast a little bit with the choppiness. Okay. So if there's a longer note, then we want to hear a little late. Mm -hmm. So try that. Okay. Yep, that's getting there. That's getting there. I like that better. Now, this next little group of notes, I didn't hear all of them. You kind of swallowed them. I need, I need to hear every note. Dada, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Again, da 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 da. That's better. Go on. Good. In this space here, I also want to hear some moments where the notes are connected and not separated. So instead of see all the choppiness. So the C goes immediately to the D. And then the D. Try that. Oh, you can even give vibrato on that D. That'll really mix things up. Good. Now let me hear this next group, and I need to hear every single note. Okay, you need to think one, two, one, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. Try that. Again, da 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 da. Yeah, so the interval, much better already. The interval from the C sharp to the G is a tricky drop. But you have to be ready to grab that G. Da 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 da. Let me hear that little group again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Yep, that's it. Do you guys hear that? She nailed it. And it sounds so good when you do that. You have to do that on every single little fast technical thing. You have to hear every single note. That's what makes it exciting. Um, good. I really liked how you were willing to slow some of these passages down, like the rubato. Um, and you did some really beautiful um, diminuendos. Let's look at, I have a little trick for the very last note. Let me see this again. Because um, you want it to get softer. You've got that diminuendo to double piano, but you still want it to speak. So one thing you can try is when you, when you hit the F, very, very slightly pull the flute to your right while you sort of pull your lips a tiny millimeter to your left. So they go apart from each other. I'm exaggerating it so you can see it on the video, but the movement is actually very tiny. And my eyebrows went up too. Well, we're about gonna have to wrap up. Okay, so. practice that at home. Okay. Okay, write it down. Okay. Very nice job, good job. Thank you. I wish we could do the rest of the piece, but um, that was great. Yeah, so let's move on to um, Katie with the Chaminade Concertino. And where are you? Wave to me. I'm here. Oh, there you are, thank you. I'm, I'm looking at all the squares. So do you wanna just go ahead and start it? Instead of um, doing the video, we can just- Sure. Uh,
so we can work on some things. But very nice, very pretty tone. You're getting some Thank very you. nice um, reverb and echo in your room. Are you in a bathroom? Oh, I'm in a really big room with tile oh. floor and cinder block and windows. Oh, well, it sounds great. <laughs> um, and so very, very pretty tone. I like what I'm hearing. Um, guess what? You get to start your piece just like we did with the eBay without a tongue. Okay. Not. Do you guys hear how it's just less elegant? It has that. Yeah, I don't like that. I like. So can you start it again? Mm -hmm. Ha. Yeah, that was it. That was much better. So start to get used to that and experiment with that in your playing. Um, I noticed that when you take a breath, you lose a tiny bit of time. Okay. Every single time. So practicing it with the metronome will start to train you to not lose any time, but you're going to, because you're used to it, you may have to feel like you're jumping in a little bit early after the breath just because you've sort of trained yourself to jump in a little late. Okay. So I want you to start it again. And when you take a breath, after the breath, I want you to come in what feels to you like a nanosecond too soon. So because like we've got this first breath. You don't want to lose time after that breath. You don't want to play. It's imperceptible, it's very slight, but you want to keep that heartbeat, the pulse, moving. Okay. So try that. And no tongue on the first note. I know, I really shouldn't have. I think what happened, was I was trying to breathe faster and I just opened my mouth, but actually didn't take in any. Okay, good. As long as you know that the phrase ends after the A. Okay, good. Go on after the A. Okay. teeny tiny detail but at measure five when you have the eighth notes you're rushing them a little bit and you're okay. doing it again two measures be uh measure 13. okay up eighth notes so da da di da di da di da di da da so just be careful on those now mm -hmm. let's go on after 15 because i want to hear your triplets and your fancy notes your runs to do with this triplet section um first of all i take that pianissimo more seriously okay which also means in order to create um a, a dynamic change there and a color change i don't take the diminuendo before it as quite as seriously so i finish my phrase with a little bit more presence but then i suddenly take it down for that be natural okay because i like the contrast there um, so, totally different world now. So we have this big, this big, lush, wide, expansive. a little tighter the the technique with the triplets and to me it sounds very much like asian music mm. from the orient 
which was uh, in this time period, there was a lot of interest in um, exoticism, mm -hmm. and in music from the Orient. And it sounds very much like da nee dum, nee da dum, yeah. It sounds like um, Asian string instruments. Have you ever heard some of mm -hmm. the different Chinese string instruments? Um, so I, I love to get that little, uh, sh it's called chinoiserie in art. There's a movement of chinoiserie, of painters painting um, pottery that looks like it's from, from Asia. It's like a little chinoiserie. Just for that measure. And then it kind of goes back to the European world. And I need to hear every single note, so I'm going to listen for groupings. Okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I need to hear it. So try going back to the big phrase before 15 and then do something different. And I could hear some, uh, you know, texture color change there. So thank you. Um, your runs were better for the first measure, but once you got into the septuplets, I didn't quite hear the grouping. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I do like one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Just play that, the first two groups, the first 14 notes, but group it one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, good, again. Right. Again, tight at that tempo. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. That's how we play runs. That was awesome. So you have to do that for all of them. Now we get to go back to one measure of expansive lyricism and then back to our little uh, Asian theme. So try. Um, you can start at 19 or you can go back before, whatever you're comfortable with. I need to hear one, two, three. Uh. And then I do need a tongue on the B natural at the key change. Okay. Let me hear that. Now, do not overblow these double tongued notes. Play okay. less, blow less, and resonate more. Five minute warning. Yes, that was good. So I could hear those articulated notes better. Um, and the, the interesting note, I think, is the E natural, because we, the E natural that occurs, the low E, mm -hmm right before the last triplets, because it's the note that's all by itself. It doesn't have a duplicate. We have da, 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 da. So you wanna make sure that people hear that the pattern has changed, it's not. So it's. So be aware of that, let me hear that. Okay. Again, now I start with ka. The first G is ka, and then okay. I have the second G is ta. 
Kataka taka taka taka. Good. Don't overblow. One more time. Good. That's almost there. Then let me hear da 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 da. And then keep going. Yep. Good. Oh, okay. Good. Now make sure I'm hearing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. I, I'm really thinking of fours when I play this. It's so it's fours and then two. Because mm -hmm. when we get to 11, it's not even. Yeah. Um, Would I? I'm going to tongue them now just so you can hear the groupings, even though I would not tongue it in performance. But you can hear the groupings, and that's what keeps it locked in. Okay. I'll try it, and then I think we might be out of time. Da, 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 da. Yay, that was it. That's, that's when technique comes to life, when it sort of sparkles because you hear every note. Yeah. You have to hold yourself to that standard. And it's uh, for all of us. Now I'm just not talking to you, I'm talking to the whole class. That's the hard work that we have to put in to sound like a virtuoso. That, that, those, that sound of a virtuoso is not mush. Not, I'm not trying to say that you sounded like that at all, Katie. Um, but I'm just saying, I've judged many competitions. I've been on many juries. When people or, pe or have students who come to me who say, I can play the Carmen Fantasy. And they come and they play and they play like 15% of the notes or 20% of the notes. And I say, you did not play the Carmen Fantasy. You thought you were playing the Carmen Fantasy. You convinced yourself you were playing the Carmen Fantasy, but you played 20% of it. We have to grab every note. And that just sometimes means grouping, hearing those little grouping patterns, slowing it down and repeating and muscle memory. Um, but then when it works, it just sounds so virtuosic. And you will hear the difference if you have two players playing next to each other and one kind of mushes through the technique and the other one really grabs every note, the listener will be like, wow, to the one who played every note. And the typical listener who's not musically trained might not know why they liked one more than the other because they still hear the swish. But this, when the swish actually has, has patterns and notes behind it, it, it really sounds remarkable. So very good job. Thank you so much for playing for us today. Sound beautiful. All three of you really played very well and I appreciate how well prepared you were. So thank you. Oh my gosh, Nina, I can't hear your microphone. Is anyone else having trouble hearing her? Yeah, I can also not hear you like at all. You're gonna um, have to type in the chat. Or... Let me make sure everyone else is muted. Um... So much, beautiful class, thank you. Thank you so much, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I believe Professor would like th us to take, um, you know, uh, another maybe 10, 15 minutes to just answer a couple questions. So if you have any uh, questions, I know in the beginning you spoke about your um, uh, entrepreneurial spirit and going to YouTube and maybe you could speak a little bit of what you think um, us as college students who will be entering the world post-graduation and what that looks like now, because now we've been with YouTube a lot and maybe there's something else new that you know about. Yeah, well, um, one thing that I can definitely tell you is that I sort of came out of my training. 
period. Like by the, when I got my doctorate, it was um, 2003. And everything that I did up until then was a world that many of you may not even really know. It was the old world. There was barely an internet. The internet was relatively new. The internet sort of came about when I was a doctoral student, not even an undergrad. Um, so literally when I went through all my training, it was like get an orchestra job or get a university teaching job. That was it, like that was the world of music. Um, so I, I was really like part of this dramatic transformation of the world where you could start to get information um, from around the world. Like just the fact that we're having this class, that I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. You guys probably didn't even know where I was. You were like, does she live in New York? Does she live in Chicago? Does she live in Tennessee? No, it doesn't matter. We're, we're talking to each other and we're interacting. I, I had to go to Paris to, to hear a French flute teacher teach flute. There was no internet. Um, so the world changed dramatically and I was not trained for it. So then you would say, how is it possible that, that I sort of was able to embrace it and use it? And it's because I had other skills that an education gave me. I knew how to communicate. I knew how to write. I knew how to organize ideas. I knew a lot about music because I had a really good education, really good training, and I studied hard and worked hard at music. And I learned from the best teachers that I could as much as I could all the time. And so I was able to adapt my knowledge and my skills to like this new world. I think the world that you guys are coming up with, you're like used to this idea that everything changes all the time, but you still have a lot of uncertainty because things are changing all the time and you don't know what's coming next. And someone asked in the chat, like, how will COVID change music activity on social and online? We, we're gonna find out. I can give you guesses and ideas, but we don't know. So the best way to be ready is to just be, be um, aware. Have your eyes and ears open, learn as much as you can, and don't be afraid to take risks. I mean, honestly, it was more, it was more this character trait, I think, that led me to do it than it was any brilliant insight. Because when I started putting videos on YouTube, I didn't think anybody was gonna watch them. I, mean, I had no idea. It was like a total shock when I started finding out that people all around the world were watching these videos. Um, but I was like willing to just take a risk and put myself out on a public platform. Um, and it was not easy, it was scary, I gotta tell you. Um, and whenever as artists we put ourselves out there, it's scary. But then when you put yourselves out there to like a whole world of anonymous people, it's, it's definitely scary. But just having like the willingness to try new things is, is what's gonna help you. Be willing to try the new things. Listen, see what other people are doing and be like, how could that apply to my life? How could that apply to flute? Because when I first heard about YouTube, it was not because of any other flutists doing it. And it was not even because of any other classical musicians doing it because I was really literally almost one of the first. It was because rock guitarists were obsessed with YouTube. And I read this article in the New York Times about how rock and roll guitarists were sharing these videos that they made in their bedrooms of their playing. And I was like, that is so cool. Well, I could do that at, with a flute. So I did it as a flute. So just like absorb everything around you. And when you see something that is interesting or cool, even if it's not in your own field, think about how could I try that or adapt it or apply it. And then don't be afraid to try something and if it fails, it fails. Um, but just being open to those experiences, um, I think will be helpful. Yeah, Juan has a question. Um, he asks, in which ways have you found that your social media present has offered you opportunities in the quote, real world? And also what factors do you think uh, uh, led to your growth of your platform? Those are really good questions. Um, so first, what factors led to the growth of my platform? Um, it was really different back then than it is now. So the, I can tell you my stories and they're very interesting stories, but they're already almost historical because you can't really replicate it anymore. Um, when I first started on YouTube, first of all, I was one of the only flutists on YouTube. 
James Galloway had a couple recorded videos. Um, and that, and the, a woman named Jennifer Clough, who also had really good videos, was on. And that was it. We were the only ones. So when I started doing it, back then the algorithms were different. So it was much easier to get picked up by the algorithm on YouTube and get your stuff spread out. Nowadays, it's much harder because YouTube, the algorithm is finding like tens of thousands of flute videos are getting uploaded every day. And there's just so much out there that now also, um, I hate to say it, but I think YouTube wants you to buy advertising. They want you to pay to get visibility. Back when I started, I was lucky. It was like, they were like, oh, there's a flutist. She's the only one. We'll put her all, you know, we'll promote her. If somebody else puts in the keyword flute, she pops up. That was it. You put in the word flute, I popped up. So um, it, was, it was different. And then it also, because there was this, um, there was no other source of information. It was like what I said, people all over the world were getting the information and people in parts of the world who don't have access to that many teachers who wanted to learn about the flute and hear about the flute. It, it might be hard for some of you to even imagine a world where like, if you used to want to know something about a topic, we, and Nina, you probably remember this, we used to have to go to this place called the library. And we used to have to be like, who won the Academy Award in 1963? I don't know. I guess I'll go downtown and ride the bus to the library and I'll go to the card catalog and I'll find a book that has the list of all the Academy Award winners for the past 50 years. Okay, anytime we wanted information, it was like a big process. Now you can type it in. So people were, I mean, I got messages from literally all over the world. I got a message from a woman who was a nun in the Philippines in a, in a, a convent where she was not allowed to leave. So she had no contact with an actual flute teacher, but she was allowed to, they, they had computer access and she wanted to learn how to play the flute and she found my videos because she could type it in. So that really, just being the first was a huge benefit. It really spread. Um, the other thing is that I, oh, Nina wrote, card catalog was traumatizing. <laughs> it was a different world. We lived in a totally different world. Um, and so the opportunities that it gave me is that it gave me an opportunity to really share my ideas. And I had studied with many of the best flutists in the world. I had wonderful teachers and I was able to spread what I learned. And I felt like it was an obligation, like to pass it on. Like I actually was lucky enough to study with this person so I should share that information. Um, and that, because it was sort of different information, it spread and people started talking about it. And I put up some controversial topics, um, topics on like things that make flutists argue with each other, like vibrato and breathing. You know, things that make people really I can't believe she said that. And some of the things I said people disagreed with um, and were really mad about. And because of that, it went viral. So you know how they say no bad publicity, there's no bad publicity, it's all good publicity. That's kind of what happened to some of my, my early videos. It was hard for me at the time because people were criticizing what I said. But then other people were like, well, you know, I tried it and it actually helped my playing. So that's kind of how it went viral and how it uh, impacted me in the real world is that I started getting real performance opportunities, real teaching jobs, um, the ability to travel and meet other flutists and do concerts and, um, and then to do online teaching as well because people from around the world, like I said, who didn't have access to teachers in their hometown found out about me and then asked me. And from those individual lessons, I was able to charge and um, get real world opportunities. Yeah, so I think we have time for maybe one more question. I see one just came in from Ethan. He asks, do you have any advice for learning a language? You mentioned you were a Fulbright scholar and studied in Paris, especially in the US when you aren't getting the exposure you would from studying in a foreign country. So um, in my case, um, I took high school French and I liked languages. So I kind of thought it was fun, but the real uh, way that I got the experience was when I went to that summer program in Quebec, Canada, that was an opportunity for me to practice my French because like half the classes were in English and half were in French. 
Um, and then when I decided I wanted to study in France, I was like, oh boy, I better work on my French because I'm going to have a hard time. So I audited some language classes at my university. I didn't want to take them for credit because I was a senior and I was like, I do not want to stress myself out. I don't need to take this language class for my degree. So I, I audited and I was able to, um, and I actually also had a couple friends who liked language and took French and we would go out for coffee and say like, let's just practice our French. Um, so I was able to work on my French that way. Um, I think as a musician, studying a language was really good for me. Um, but uh, you know, nowadays, you know, I didn't have the internet back then. So there weren't all these, um, uh, what is the, my kids use all these apps for their school classes and for learning languages and they have it on their phones and they have it on their computers and it's really pretty cool. But um, you know, you just have to be self-motivated if you don't have access to a class, but you can also look at, um, you know, online courses and find a friend to talk to. Okay, well, I don't see um, any other questions coming in the chat, so it is about time to wrap up. And on the behalf of the whole WVU Flute Studio, I just wanted to thank you so much for lending your time, your wisdom, and uh, all your experience with us. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Mina, can we hear you? Oh, we still can't hear you. But I'm sure she's echoing all I'm my sorry. sentences. Dustin try, <laughs> Dustin, try and mute yourself because I think there's feedback from your mic that's cutting Professor off. Is that true? Hello? Wow, Sammy, you figured it out. So how does that work? If, if two people are unmuted and one has feedback, then a third can't jump in? Nina, thank you so much for such a great class. Um, and uh, so, you know, if you're interested in taking lessons with Nina, what, what should they do? Just contact you and? Yep, they can email me and I can send them the information. I'll put my email in the chat. But yeah, this was a pleasure, it was fun. Wonderful. And thanks for joining us. And again, every Tuesday, Thursday, and this week, we're going to be putting up a new post with all the dates in a really easy way to see. But you can go to our page and see what we have coming up. Many more artists and performances. So, and we'll all we'll see you around. And thank you once again, Nina, for such a motivating class. Thank you, Nina. Other Nina, Flutus, Nina. <laughs>